And the Oscar goes to Martin Scorsese. Martin Scorsese, a name steeped in the depths of film history. He's often likened to the greats, side by side with Spielberg, Coppola, Kubrick or Hitchcock. Today, I'm going to take you through exactly why Martin Scorsese had one of the most influential impacts on the film industry during the pop culture period. First of all, his impact on pop culture. You talking to me? Popular culture is often defined as any kind of commercial product, media, art, or activity that reflects the general tastes of the population. Its period lasted from the end of World War II to the mid-1990s. Since the beginning of his career, Martin Scorsese's films have dramatically affected pop culture and also managed to represent the film industry's taste by innovating and popularizing some now very common film techniques. A the mob mentality. The best example of Scorsese's impact on pop culture are the themes that were explored and popularised in his early films. Specifically, Scorsese often chose to portray the world of mobsters and American crime bosses in his films and consistently yielded high praise from both critics and audiences. In fact, in a list depicting the 20 best gangster films of all time, collected by the British newspaper The Telegraph, three of Martin Scorsese's films make appearances, Mean Streets, Goodfellas and Casino. Francis Ford Coppola, considered as one of the greatest directors of all time, is the only other director to have multiple films on this list, with his two undisputed masterpieces, The Godfather, Parts 1 and 2. These themes and motifs appear to have been prevalent and popular within films for decades. Movies such as the aforementioned Godfather series, Scarface, Once Upon a Time in America, Miller's Crossing, Reservoir Dogs, Pop Fiction, Boys in the Hood, City of God, The Usual Suspects, The French Connection. You get the picture. The point is, Themes of mob culture, to most film watchers, have been a part of the mainstream movie industry since the dawn of time. However, in the early 70s, a small film named Mean Streets brought the mob completely into the spotlight. Mean Streets was, and still is, considered one of Scorsese's first masterpieces in film. This landmark of a movie, along with the first two Godfather films, helped immensely in popularising the now widely known motif of American-Italian gangsters. It was incredibly accessible due to its handling of themes such as religion, masculinity, male friendship, family relationships, and of course, the mafia gangster culture. This recognition led the themes of gangster culture to leach into a plethora of other films, such as the movies I've already mentioned. Most, if not all, of those films were influenced by Scorsese's mobster films, Mean Streets, Goodfellas, Casino, and most recently, in 2006, The Departed. These Scorsese films have amassed large followings and have played an incredible role in instilling these themes in both the film industry and popular culture. B. Relatable but reprehensible characters. The character of Travis Bickle from Scorsese's 1976 film Taxi Driver, in my opinion is Scorsese's most influential and original character in all his films. He is the epitome of an anti-hero with a damaged psyche. Travis Bickle was a returned Vietnam War veteran who, fed up with the monotony and repetitiveness of everyday life, descended further and further into insanity and crippling depression over the course of the film. This psychotic character was simultaneously relatable and reprehensible, the perfectly crafted anti-hero. The easiest way to detail Bickle's influence on society and pop culture is to cite the case of John Hinckley Jr., a man so obsessed with Taxi Driver that he attempted to assassinate the US President Ronald Reagan in 1981. Much like the majority of the audience, John Hinckley Jr. identified with Bickle, but he took it to the extreme. He watched the film, read the book, and listened to the movie's score for hours on end. He would model his behaviour on Bickle, wear the same clothes as Bickle, even practice with firearms to model the scenes in Taxi Driver. Throughout all of this, Hinckley developed a strong infatuation for Jodie Foster, the actress who portrayed Iris in Taxi Driver, an abused child prostitute. Hinckley would write pages upon pages to Jodie Foster in the hopes of being recognised. Until one day, he decided to take action by attempting to assassinate the president, Ronald Reagan. Here are his own words written to Jodie Foster. Over the past seven months, I've left you dozens of poems, letters, and love messages in the faint hope that you could develop an interest in me. Although we talked on the phone a couple times, I never had the nerve to simply approach you and introduce myself. The reason I'm going ahead with this attempt now is because I cannot wait any longer to impress you. 
He then promptly left to attend a conference held by Reagan, pushed his way to the front of the crowd, drew his revolver and fired six rounds, striking four people, including the president. He was found not guilty due to insanity, much to the horror and chagrin of American citizens everywhere. This attempted assassination provided an immense impact on the public. Hinckley's name and face were plastered everywhere in the media. Whether you heard Travis Bickle's name through Hinckley's trial, or you identified with him so much that you attempted to murder a political figure, it's safe to say that he had an incredible impact. 2. His impact on the film industry Martin Scorsese has been credited as popularising some of the most innovative and commonly used film techniques in modern cinema. It would take too much time to delve into every technique he pioneered, so I will focus on his most popular film technique, the freeze frame. A staple of the 1980s movies, Martin Scorsese adored the freeze frame. In fact, in his film Raging Bull, Scorsese used a total of 13 freeze frames, each to great effect. Many movies in the 80s were particularly fond of using freeze frames in their films, whether it was light-hearted films such as The Breakfast Club, or Ferris Bueller's Day Off, to more serious films such as Gallipoli, or the Rocky series. Freeze frames were everywhere. Many films that are now recognised as parts of pop culture, such as the ones already mentioned, utilise the freeze frame. Scorsese's freeze frames, however, simultaneously popularised the technique and took full advantage of the method. Take Goodfellas, for example. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. As can be seen in the film snippet, Scorsese uses a freeze frame centred on Ray Liotta's disgruntled face after having witnessed a brutal act of violence, accompanied by upbeat music and voiceover narration stating how he always wanted to be a gangster. This sets the tone for the entirety of the film, from one frame. From the upbeat music contrasted with dark overtones, another technique that is now widely employed by filmmakers such as Danny Boyle, the mime behind Slumdog Millionaire and Trainspotting, to the mob themes that are central to the entire movie, this freeze frame from the start of Goodfellas is more than just a still image, it sets the audience up for an incredible experience. Sure, nowadays it's easy to write off the freeze frame as cheesy or lame, but regardless of its reputation, it's incredibly hard to deny Scorsese's influence in legitimising it as a film technique and rooting it in pop culture. His influence on the freeze frame and numerous other film techniques, such as the fast dolly zoom, tracking shot, bright lights in the audience's faces, etc, etc, Coupled with his influential themes and characters, namely mob culture and Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver, show that Martin Scorsese had one of the most influential effects on the film industry during the pop culture period.